Do yeah. I see the? Do I see the? That that's forward. Fantastic. Right. Sorry, guys. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, come on, come on. Good morning. Good morning. Nice, nice to hear. Good. I'm here today to speak to you about collaboration. Collaboration being the key, not only to our clients' property, but to our success. So I want to make sure I'm speaking to the right people. So I've got a little questionnaire, like Simon have. I've got a little questionnaire for you. And if your reply to any of these is yes, put your hands up. And this is probably my session. You're not probably, it's probably the wrong session for you. So has anyone here got too many happy clients? Anyone here making too much money? Okay. Anyone here, any agents getting on too well with their lawyers? Okay. Any lawyers getting on too well with their agents? Okay, great. So you're the right audience. Okay, so stay, stay for longer. So what we're all talking about, we all want those things, don't we? We all want, we all want to give we all want more time, we want to make more money, we all improve our service, we all want happier clients. So today, what's the aim of today? Today is not to talk about changing the law. It's not going to happen in one day. What I'm talking about today is the reality. The reality is the way we're collaborating is not working. That, that's reality. The guys on the stage have a fantastic relationship, but overall, the relationship that we've got as two industries that are interdependent on each other is not great. Look at the results we're getting. Look at, the, look at the inefficiencies that we have working in, the, in industries which are codependent. Look at the results we're getting for our clients. Simon mentioned five months on average to get to completion. Look at the fall through rates. I'm here to present to you a case to say collaboration is the most important thing you need to do this year. We need to have more empathy for each other and understand each other. We need to not blame each other all the time that it's their problem, it's their problem. We can have an amazing business, an amazing industry. It's a win, win, win. The agent gets to win. They get to improve their service through collaboration. They get faster exchanges. They get more completions and repeat business. The lawyer wins. The lawyer gets a better service, faster exchange, more completions, and happier clients. And above all, the client wins. That's what we're here for. We're here as an industry to support our clients. And we're not giving them the service that they deserve. So it's a win, win, win. And this collaboration, this is what's going to future-proof our business. As Simon alluded to, it's going to be a tough year this year. It's going to be less numbers. So every deal is especially important. So I don't want you guys to worry about taking notes today. I've got slides for you. I've got some extra slides so you can take them from me afterwards and they can act as a little aid memoir for you. For you. So I want to give you my background. My background is I've worked... I've walked in both of your shoes. I started, my first job was as a Saturday boy in a, an estate agency. I loved it. You know, I loved selling. I loved speaking to people. I became a negotiator, a valuer, a manager, and eventually owned and ran several estate agency businesses. So why did I become a lawyer? Why did I join the dark side? Okay, it wasn't because I just loved the law. To be honest with you, it's because the lawyers were letting our clients down. And the service that we provide as agents, where we were obsessed by customer service, we were just being let down by the lawyers. That's what it felt like anyway. You know, that we were being tarnished by the same brush that the service they were providing. And quite frankly, it affected our profits. Because the easy deals that should have gone through weren't going through. And when we looked at them, they were easy deals. So we thought, enough, enough is enough. Enough is enough and became lawyers. So I'm not here to, today to tell you who's the good guys and who's the bad guys. I'm not here to say that today. I'm here to tell you that we all work really, really hard. We all work in an industry where there's good lawyers and there's actually bad lawyers. And there's good estate agents and actually bad estate agents. But all I know is we're going to get better results if we work together. But one of the starting points of today is we've got to value what we do more. Because what we do is very special. What we do is we're like Disney. We're better than Disney. Okay, because Disney gets to change people's lives 
for a weekend, a week, two weeks. We get to change people's lives forever. So it's like going to Disney, going to work. You guys should be skipping to work. But equally, we're like superheroes because some of our clients move because of very harrowing circumstances. Probate, divorce. So we're like the fourth emergency service as well. So it's an amazing industry. We get to touch people's lives at these times. So let's collaborate. So what is collaboration? Well, collaboration is really two or more people working together. As simple as that. Simple as that. And we, I think as an industry, all understand the logic of working together, collaborating with people in our team, in our internal team. We know we should have meetings. We know we should speak to each other. We know we should get on with each other. We know maybe we should go for a drink, get to know each other. We know we should be talking about problems. We do that internally. But we don't do it enough externally. And we've got an external team here. We're interdependent on each other. We need to be collaborating better. And that's good for everyone. Look at some amazing collaborations outside of our industry. But let's look for examples of how we can be inspired and make changes to our own businesses. Look at these collaborations here, Pixar. Now, Pixar was a failing computer business. It's, it's, it's one of the most successful movie studios ever now. But it was a failing computer business started by Steve Jobs until it collaborated with Disney. I keep on talking about Disney. I like Disney. Simon likes Disney as well, I know. But, but it was amazing. The collaboration is what transformed the, that business. Look at Apple, Apple Pay. Apple Pay was a collaboration between Apple and MasterCard. And what it gave is a win-win-win because... Apple won, it got more people using its, its products. MasterCard won, because it got new people to use their IT. And also, who won was the consumer, because they were able to spend money without even having a credit card. How amazing is that? Quite often I hear people talking about, well, there's too many agents involved, there's too many lawyers involved. Oh, you know, we need, there's too many, too many cooks for the broth. We're giving different messages. That's the problem. We're giving different messages. It's not about how many people are involved. Look at this, look at Formula One. Formula One pit stop, there's 21 people involved in the Formula One pit stop. It's a lot of people, isn't it? 21 people. And they do a pit stop, change four tires and the front wings, back wings, in two and a half seconds. Now, I don't know if you've been down to Halfords recently, but it doesn't take two and a half seconds. It takes about a 15 minute tire. So that's what great collaboration does. Great collaboration expedites and transforms what you can produce. One and one and one is no longer two. It's three, four, five, six, seven. That's what collaboration does. So there's a really famous quote that our business believes in, and it says this, and I think this is, this is so important for today. You can get all you want in life if you help enough people get what they want. And that's what we're here for. We're here to help our clients. And if we can give our clients what they need, they'll be coming back for more. And even though it's going to be a tougher year with less stock and less numbers, they'll be coming back for more for your business. So surely, because we are interdependent, we must be best friends. Surely? We must be best friends, yeah? Agents and sisters, they love each other. Well, what's the reality of it? What do some lawyers think about agents? Well, it's a bit like the perception of it sometimes a bit like the Wolf of Wall Street. You guys, you have these amazing parties on Friday night. You throw people on dartboards, you know, and it's so easy. You know what? You just you go around the house, take a photograph, upload it to Rightmove, and it sells like that. How easy is that? How easy? The only problem you've got is when you drive your convertibles, all the cash coming out of your cars. And that's the only problem. The reality is, let me tell you, agency is tough. And I still remember the long and hard hours I worked in agency. I still remember that I had to pay all those overheads every month, regardless if I sold the property. I had to pay for the office, I had to pay for the marketing, I had to pay for the portals. I had to pay for all of that, whether I sell it or not. And I remember how to generate business as an agent. I think lawyers, we forget how tough it is for the, for the agents out there. They've got to knock on doors. Do you want to sell your property? They've got to call their old database. Oh, I haven't spoken to you for three years. Do you want to sell your property? That's tough, sometimes soul-destroying work. You get clients coming in your office, shouting and screaming at you. So that's what, that's what the reality is. So what do some agents think about lawyers? Well, we as agents, when we were agents, we used to call our lawyers the sales prevention officers because they seemed to want to prevent all your sales going through. That seemed like it was their job. They were all on golf courses, weren't they? Friday, you can't never get a hold of a lawyer because they're all playing golf. Uh, the lawyer says, are you ready to exchange? Can try to line up complete exchange for Friday? Yes, I'm ready. What he means is 
he's ready, but he hasn't got the deposit or the report. We have loads of jokes for them. But I, can't repeat, I can't repeat those jokes here. We used to think they all had... Have you ever spoken to a rude lawyer? I'm sure you haven't. We used to think they all had these telephone cases. I hate people. They used to have they had all those cases. But the reality is, let me tell you agents in the room, being a conveyance is hard work. Hard work. There's loads of times I see emails well outside, well outside normal business hours. They're working hard. They want to get deals to completion. They actually want to get them through. People talking about lawyers charge too much. In my experience, to be honest with you, lawyers don't charge enough. Lots of lawyers don't charge enough. And they do lots of work for free. Now, I think it's true. I think it's unfortunate. I think this is a bit unfortunate. It's that the 99% of lawyers that give the 1% the bad name. Do you get it? 95%? 99%? Yeah. You'll get it. When you go home, that was a good joke. <laughs> anyway, what impact is this having on our clients? So the lack of collaboration that we're having, what impact is that having on our clients? Well, it's having the impact. You've seen, you've seen that the national average, the time to get to completion is five months. Five months. So is that any wonder that's going to impact on the service you're giving? If it takes five months, like the guy said, you know, that's why our fall-through rates are so high. The fall-through rate is about, national average, about 37%. Which other industry do you go into a shop and say, look, I'll have those shoes? And he says, yeah, come back in five months. What's the likelihood that you find another pair of shoes down the road that's a bit cheaper or more to your liking? That's, that's the service we're giving. When a client comes and gets an offer, what do they really want? They don't just want offers. They want to move. And they're dependent on you guys and expect you guys to move them. So if you're not moving them in the time scale they expect, it comes down to you. You get blamed for it. You get blamed for it. So the reality is, is that most clients expect to move. There's been surveys and most clients expect to move in 12 weeks. So 12 weeks as opposed to five months. It's completely different, isn't it? No wonder they're not getting the service that we need to give them. And in fact, the service is quite embarrassing, isn't it? It's quite embarrassing because if you type in the most stressful things in life, the first thing that comes up is death, understandably. The next thing that comes up in life is divorce. And the next thing is moving. How can that be the case? We can't provide a service where that happens. That's above. It's more, more stressful than having a major illness. That can't be right. So that service, how does that experience to the clients? How does that transform to the client? Where it relates, when they start off, when you first sell their property, they go, oh, great, amazing, thank you very much. I want to sell, the, I've got the property of my dreams, thank you. And then it gets to week eight, and it's a little bit like this. You're not moving me in time. You're not moving me in time. It gets to week 12, when they're expecting to move, and it's like this. Let's hope you don't have too many clients like this. So... Are clients being unreasonable, do you think? Are they expecting too much? Because you, on your to-do list, you've already got so many things, haven't you? You've already got so many things on your to-do list. Are they being unreasonable? You know, you've got, how are we get the staff? How are you going to get the time? You know, it's too much, don't you think? Does anyone think that? Look at these businesses which thought their clients were getting too much of a good thing. What's the common theme with Blockbuster, Woolworths, and Kodak? Do you know what the common theme is? They don't exist anymore. And that's, that's the thing, that's the reality, is the reality is now society has moved on. It's reasonable that clients want a, an improved service. It's reasonable, because I expect that. When I order from Amazon Prime, if I, if I order in the morning and I don't get my order within a two-hour delivery the same day, I'm actually angry. So society moves on. The price is a better service. We've got to pay that price to be in business. And... How are we going to do that? We're going to do that by collaborating more. We're here ultimately only for the end consumer. That's what we're here for. And we're going to provide the service that they deserve. They don't actually want much. They don't actually want as much as you think. They want to be able to trust someone. That's one of the main things. Any report you've seen, they want to be able to trust the lawyers. They want to be trusted estate agents. Now, I've got some good news, but it's also bad news. The good news is we both, as an industry, the lawyers and the agents, have made it into the top ten. We made it into the top 10 of the least trusted professions. So, good news and bad news. What else do they expect? They expect us to actually manage their expectations. Like the guys were saying earlier on, we've got to manage expectations properly. Now, if we're saying different things, how are we going to ever manage people's expectations? It's not going to happen. 
One of the we're very proud to be multiple winners of the Esters. One of the reasons we do that is because we actually manage the expectation. We speak to the agents and understand, well, what, you know, what's the realistic time scale for this? Very much like Rob and Ian were saying, you know, we talk about, well, what's going to happen this month? You know, we manage people, and that, that's what clients expect. They don't want much. They don't want much. So what's going to happen if you don't listen to your clients? Well, if you don't listen to your clients, this is what your profit's going to look like. You know, we've all been very lucky the last few years, haven't we? We've all actually been very, very lucky. You know, but, but stock is going to be shorter this year. It's going to be less transactions. So this is almost a perfect storm. Unless we're getting those fewer transactions, more cases through to completion, we're not going to be in business. You know, we need to collaborate more. Now's the time to do it. So today is really like an opportunity. You know, it's a bit depressing because we should get on better. But also it's an opportunity because the results that we're all getting today are based on the collaboration that we're giving today. So that's a massive opportunity for us. So it's bad news, isn't it? Bad news is you've got to spend some time speaking to each other. But the good news is you're going to be that, like that little boy in the corner. Yes, you can. You can do this. You've got to collaborate. And I think one of the interesting things is who, who likes Harry, Harry Potter fans? You can see the Harry Potter fans here today. So it's like uh, Professor Snape in Harry Potter. He was like, everyone thought he was the villain, but he was the hero. And that's what it's like with teen our professions. Lawyers, your agents are your heroes, because without them, you don't get any work. Nothing sells. And agents, lawyers are your heroes. Because without them, nothing completes. You should have pictures of each other on your walls. So how we're going to do it is, is the whole point of the forum today, how we're going to do it. But I want to talk to you about three principles which I think are very relevant to how you're going to do it. It comes from the great book of The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. So habit number four is think win-win. I've said at the start, if we collaborate more, it's a win-win-win. It's even better than win-win. Yeah, it's the Esther's version of win-win-win. It's got, it got more on it. Okay? The agent's going to win. He's going to get more cases through. Yeah? The lawyer's going to win. He's going to get more work. He's going to get more cases through. But ultimately, the ultimate winner is the client, and that's, again, what we're here for. We wouldn't have an industry if clients weren't moving. Then the next thing is the next stage for us is to, the next habit is seek to understand and then be understood. What that means is you don't, call each other, shouting down the phone about why haven't you done this, why haven't you done that. You understand what the problem is first. You know, believe you me, lawyers want to get cases through to completion. And believe you me, agents work really hard and actually they want to provide a service for their clients. So seek to understand and then be understood. That's the way we're going to collaborate better together. And the next thing naturally comes out of that is collaborate, synergize. Because if you synergize and collaborate, as I said, one plus one isn't two anymore. I know my maths is bad, but I got that. This is some analogy. Right? So one plus one is three, four, five, six, seven. You can achieve so much more if you, if you synergize. Now, you guys are all busy. Okay, so how are you going to do all of this? How are you going to do it on top of what you already got to do? So how are you going to do it is use the scientific principle of the compound effect. Anyone heard of the compound effect? Well, if not, you're in a big treat today because it's a scientific principle which will change your life. Change your life, I say. Oh, my gosh. I need a better reaction than that. But the compound effect is essentially the principle of small things over a period of time will make a massive difference. And that's good or bad. So say, for example, I like, I'm always on a diet. I'm always on a diet. So say, for example, I'll give you an analogy of a diet. So say for, uh, I had 2,000 calories was my required intake to not put on weight and not to lose weight. If I chose to have 125 calories less a day, which is, I love chocolate, so that's only a small bar of chocolate. It's a two-finger Kit Kat, okay? So if I choose to have that less a day, over a day, over a week, it won't make any difference. I'll, I'll stay the same weight. But if you bring that forward and keep on doing that, keep on doing those good habits, we start collaborating with each other and keep on collaborating over a period of time. Having one less Kit Kat a day I lose 39 pounds, almost three stone in three years. How amazing is that? And that's the same with our collaboration.
But that also works the other way around. If I had an extra bar of Kit Kat a day, and I, you can tell I quite often do, but if I had that every, every other day, it wouldn't make a difference. It wouldn't increase weight the first day, the first week, the first month. But over three years, I'd put in free stone. Yes, yeah, so it's a massive difference. So that's the power of compounding effects. But the interesting thing is, if you look at the businesses, the difference between the guy that's done the good habits, that's collaborating, that is having a, a, you know, less chocolate a day, and the difference between that person and the person that's actually not collaborating, having that extra bar of chocolate, is now this. You know, it was this. They were the same. But it's now this. That this is what's going to future-proof our business. This is what's going to make a difference to us. Because we're already so, very, so busy. All we need to do is stop making it each other's problems and start working with each other like the guys were talking about earlier. We've got so much in common. We, you know, we, we, we need each other. I know this works. It's worked for our business. We've always, we, you know, we came to convincing with our estate, estate agency hat on. So that was always for us. We wanted to do it in a way that we felt was best for our clients. We were obsessed by customer service and we want to keep on doing it that way. But, and so our motto has always been certainty, speed, and collaboration. About four years ago, we actually made it part of our advertising campaign. Because collaboration is what changed us. You know, what made us, I think, a very good business already into an even better business. Because actually, we were listening to our agents and understanding what they really wanted, listening to our clients. As a result, we've got small things that we do differently, which you guys can do differently, which make a massive difference if you keep on applying those and changing those principles over time. As a result, we're very lucky. You know, we've got three winners in our team. We've got winning clients, because clients get to move. You know, we've got amazing Esther Awards, because they're happy with the service. We've got amazing Google reviews, which we're really proud of. So we're a winner. You know, we're a winner. The client's a winner. The agent's a winner, because he has less fall throughs. He moves more people. He makes more money. And the lawyer's a winner, because same thing. They have clients that actually move. And they have agents which, who actually love them, because they're moving their clients. So what's the reality? Well, the reality is we work. Let's, let's have a reality check, first of all. We work in an amazing industry. As I said, we're like Disney or we're like superheroes. So you guys that wear your masks and your superheroes outfits at home, that's perfectly legit, because you're in an industry which deserves that. And we're very lucky to, here today, because we've got the good guys here. You are the good guys, because you took time out of your day to come and find a solution and to improve the system to give your feedback. But please don't walk away and think this is not your problem. Because even though you're the good guys, there's plenty of bad people out there, we deserve to give our industry, give our clients an amazing service, and we need to be part of that solution. So let's not kid ourselves. We're not giving, as an industry, ourselves the respect that we deserve. And we're not helping each other enough. But ultimately, we're not serving our clients properly if we're not working together together better we have to improve the speed that we do conveyancing we have to improve that we have to improve the whole process we have to improve our service so we've said we want to achieve different things we want happier clients more money improve the service so to achieve different things we need to take different action because as einstein said Insanity is doing the same thing and expecting different results. And that's what we're doing. If we walk away from it and don't take any action, that's what it is. We're insane. Okay? So how are we going to do it? Well, that's what the forum is about today, how we're going to do it. But it involves honest conversations today between us. And let's talk about the, crux, the real crux of the problem. Let's get to the real solutions. Because we've all invested time today. And we've all got to embrace change. Change is going to come. I guarantee it. Change is going to come. Is how you decide to meet change. Are you going to meet change to be at the forefront, collaborating, and make a difference to your clients and improve that service? Or are you going to wait for change to happen to you? Are you going to, are you going to wait until the market says, you're not the right people to do my job because you're not moving me enough, you're not giving the service? I would say, embrace change. And that's what we're here for today. So, if anyone wants the slides, that's me. You can get my, I'm sitting over there, get my email address after, so I'm happy to send them to you. Uh, my name is Tony Pitchrillo, but here to just summarize. Summary is, we work in an amazing industry. We're all very lucky to be having here. We are interdependent on each other. We can't, do each, we can't do our jobs, each of us, without the other person. So why don't we make it easier for each other? Why don't we give our clients the service that they deserve? Why don't we push ourselves a bit more to, to really focus on that client service? 
There's going to be less transactions this year. If there's less transactions, we've got to value each and every one of those cases. I want you to think win, win, win. So for, and the next thing I want you to do is I want you to all stand up. Please, stand up, stand up, stand up. Because I've got a very special guest here today, and I want you to clap for them. And that special guest is you, because you've made it here. Oh, I knew that would get a big clap for today. Thank you very much.